Audi just refreshed its A3 sedan, which means we also get a new S3 and RS3. We let our friends over at Kelly Blue Book sample the new A3. We're still waiting to get our hands on the RS3, so today I'm grabbing the keys to the new S3. Looks wise, the new S3 boasts some pretty good style. Audi has been smart to pump up the fenders on most of its models, to trick your brain into thinking these are serious box flares going on. It's a nod to past sporty models, and it works well on the S3. Here now, the grille is wider, while the car itself is an inch longer and a bit under an inch taller and wider. 18-inch wheels come standard, while 19s are optional. In the cabin, Audi continues to deliver clean yet purposeful tech and simple but pleasant styling. Though you can tell this is the most affordable S model in the lineup. There's a fair bit of hard plastic. Still, the 10.1 inch touchscreen looks good and works well. Ahead of the driver, you can have either a 10.3 inch display or a 12.3 inch digital cluster. Still, we wish that Audi didn't ditch the standard style volume knob and there could be more room in the back seat, but the power on tap is absolutely a positive. The S3 features a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that delivers 306 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It spits that out to all four wheels via a seven speed dual clutch gearbox. So any S badge Audi is typically going to be a good time. It's not the most raucous good time, but it is a good time. It is a good middle ground. And that's pretty much the case here on the S3. Steering feel is great, both in the way it feels through the road and also how the steering wheel feels in my hands. I think Audi makes a really nice steering wheel. The seats are nice and supportive and the ride is pretty good as well. Now, speaking of the ride, a sport suspension system comes standard, but to get adaptive dampers, you have to jump to the S Sport package. So you're gonna spend a bit more money there. The good news here though, with the S3 in general, is that you have 18 more horsepower over the outgoing version. And I'm not gonna say that you can definitely tell, but the car feels good and happy and enjoys being pushed a little bit, but it's also fine to settle down and just cruise through traffic and get you to and from work. But here on a day like today, which is Audi weather. The car feels good, it sounds good. Now there is a bit of fake noise coming in that's plumbed into the cabin, but as much as we hated that stuff when it first came out, it's hard to care that much about it as much as we used to uh, because some of the noise is real, it's just kind of amplifying it. So it, it's, it's, it's a trick of the ears and the senses. And if you own this car, you're not gonna care about that going down the road. One thing you might care about though, is the fact that you cannot get this with a manual gearbox, nor can you get it with a torque vectoring diff. And some of you might be saying like, why would I care if I can get that with a manual gearbox? Well, because the car called the Golf R exists, and that does offer both of those things I just mentioned. So not all of you are gonna like a hatchback shape, but some of you might want the notion of feeling more engaged with your vehicle, and the Golf R potentially could deliver that to you for, around the same price, potentially even less, depending on how you spec this. So if you don't care about that sort of thing, if this is just your daily commuter slash weekend Canyon blaster toy, you're probably gonna be fine. But if you wanna live that a hardcore enthusiast life on a daily basis, I must drive a manual gearbox, you're probably gonna want the Golf R. This though, I can say, it's a pretty fun machine. It's not the most fun, because the RS3 exists with nearly 100 more horsepower and a few more tricks under its skin. This is fun. You can get into one of these for $46,895. You can spend as much as into the mid 50s on one of these, but it's still put together a decent price for a very sporty compact sedan with premium features and clean technology. Still, it'd be hard for me to argue the case for one of these to a true enthusiast when the Golf R exists, especially if they're shopping in similar price segments. Really though, the better sell is to tell a potential S3 buyer to save up a little bit more and jump to an RS3. It's a few grand more, but it is a lot more car. 